Uh, being related to him carries weight, but um, you know I welcome it all. You know, I, pressure I believe makes diamonds. I hope that one day I become a diamond because of all the pressure. Giving me integrity, humility, honor, respect, courage, discipline, a warrior spirit, so many incredible things. And that's what martial arts is about. Hello and welcome to Cutter 365 with me, Adil Halim. On this episode, the world's largest martial arts organization, One Championship, is making its historic debut in Qatar. I've come to the Lucille Sports Arena for a fight night and what is being billed as a martial arts extravaganza. Let's check out the action. Assalamu alaikum Qatar! These fans are lining up to catch a glimpse of their sporting heroes. Already hugely popular in Asia, one championship is expanding into the Middle East market. The 10-bout card in Qatar saw three world title rematches and featured Middle Eastern and international fighters competing in a mix of Muay Thai, boxing, submission grappling and mixed martial arts. Ahead of match day, the fighters put on a show for fans in a picturesque backdrop at the beach, showcasing some of their skills inside the ring. Things were a little more tense in the pre-fight press conference. Undefeated MMA champion Anatoly Malikin promised a knockout win over the Dutch knight Rainier de Ritter in the main event. And on fight night, he delivered. The 36-year-old pummeled the defending middleweight champion to become the first three-division MMA world champion. But soon after going head-to-head -head with RDR, Malikin was right there to pick his opponent off the mat and shower him with praise. This guy, legend! This guy best of the best, my opinion! This is just the second time one has been in the region. But a lot has changed since that made in 2014 event in Dubai. First of all, Amir Ali Akbari has become a huge social media star with nearly 3 million followers on Instagram. The Iranian heavyweight can't wait for the opening bell. Welcome to the Iranian stronger knots, Amir Ali Akbari. After a rough start to his one championship career, including a first round knockout at the hands of Malikin in 2021, Amir Ali Akbari is on the road to redemption. I have a fight, you know. I'm born warrior and I like fight. The 36-year-old wants another heavyweight title shot with his Russian foe. But in order to get there, he had to go through Indo-Canadian Arjun Buller. The Iranian imposed his will to the point his opponent kept backing away and was eventually disqualified for inactivity in round three. I think and I hope in children and younger guys, after watch this fight and interested for fight and come in train, you know, it's very good for body, for mind, it's for everything. This fight is the best athlete, you know. Ali Akbari is considered the region's best chance to bring a gold belt to the Middle East. Over in the flyweight submission grappling match, Saudi-born Yemeni Jiu-Jitsu world champion Osama Al Marwai said he was not only fighting for himself, but the entire region. This is my first time fighting in the Middle East uh, ever since I got my black belt. So I won the world championship in California, but I never got to showcase my skills. And this was uh, what motivated me to train hard. Uh, in my head I was like, man, there's no way I'm going to lose in the Middle East. <laughs> So hopefully I can win. Unfortunately for the 32-year-old, that pressure may have been a bit too much as he was submitted by Brazilian Gleber Souza in round one. But Almar Y can't wait for one to come back for an encore. I truly believe this is the first event of many in Qatar in the Middle East. It's just like a big opportunity for us to, you know, showcase our skills. And I always say this in the next five, ten years, trust me, on the stage in the press conference, you're going to see a lot of not only uh, Middle Eastern athletes, but Middle Eastern champions. After this debut in Qatar, one championship will undoubtedly expand its fan base in this country and across the region. I got a chance to sit down with founder and CEO Chatri Sityadong to find out how he plans to grow the sport globally. This is just the beginning of the world's largest martial arts organization and our story of showcasing these incredible heroes from every region of the world. We just saw the press conference and you refer to the fighters as heroes. Yes. Well, that was the, the, the whole birth of, of one. You know, I wanted to showcase something that was very different, but yet very authentic. 
to martial arts. And a martial arts is not necessarily what we see in the West being portrayed as thugs and, and, and blood sport and trash talk and insults of religions and, and, and whatnot. You know, I've been doing martial arts for almost 40 years and it's given me, through thousands of our training, it's given me integrity, humility, honor, respect, courage, discipline, a warrior spirit, so many incredible things. And that's what martial arts is about. And these are lifelong martial arts who happen to be the very best in the world at what they do. And they can inspire the world, you know, with, with their greatness, with their stories, with their values. You call the one the Olympics of martial arts. Yes. How come? It represents the very best of the best from all over the world across all the different martial arts there are. So uh, that's why it's the Olympics, you know. The Olympics, you, every four years we get to see the very best athletes across all different sports on the planet, all from all over the world. It's the exact same thing here, except we get to showcase every week, actually, 61 shows this year the best of the best across all these different disciplines in martial arts one is often compared to sometimes even pitted against the ufc yes you're both leaders in your own right yes tell me for the uninitiative what's the similarities and differences between the two sure well the global combat sports industry is now a, a global duopoly ufc has a lion's share of the west we have the lion's share of the east um, but yet our dna is 180 degrees opposite from each other i think um both rosters are, are equivalent, the very best of the best in the world, but UFC only focuses on one discipline, mixed martial arts, whereas one championship focuses on all the martial arts, whether it's MMA, um, kickboxing, Muay Thai, grappling, and even boxing. Um, and, and showcasing all the different martial arts makes us a bigger platform. Personally, what do you love about martial arts? You know, that's the biggest misconception about martial arts is that it's about violence. Yes, I can defend myself against 99% of, of, of people in un, unarmed combat, but that's the surface of what martial arts teaches. The, the, you know, the journey of continuous self-improvement, of struggling, of training, of perfecting your craft, thousands of hours of, of, of overcoming, uh, struggling, creates grit and resilience and integrity and humility and honor, respect, all the incredible values. And I really believe that martial arts is one of the greatest platforms to unleash human potential. It gives you that warrior spirit to conquer adversity in life. And, and that's the beauty. And that's what I want to showcase. I want to showcase that the greatness of humanity, the goodness of humanity. Hey Chatri, thanks so much. Thank Best you, appreciate it. While the UFC and one are the leading global combat sports empires, another competitor has rapidly been taking the fight to them. The Professional Fighters League entered the arena in 2018, boasting some well-known investors. Today, they claim to be the fastest growing sports league in the world. Fresh off its expansion into Europe, the PFL is making its move into the Middle East and North Africa, and Lila Humaira got a look at all the hype. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. The hands can't hit what the eyes can't see. Muhammad Ali famously said those words in 1964 before staging one of the biggest upsets in the boxing world, which launched his decorated 21-year career. The incredible story of the People's Champ has been sealed into eternal glory in museums all around the world, including here at the 321 Qatar Olympic and Sports Museum. This boxing zone is the latest gallery launch to honour the world's most famous boxing icons, including the GOAT, the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali. Today, his legacy continues in many ways. Muhammad Ali's fighting spirit is being kept alive through his grandson, Biagio Ali Walsh. We call him Poppy, and he's, that, that's been who he was my whole life. When I was a little kid, I, he was just grandpa, but he was still always like a superhero to me. I always knew he was a boxer. So it wasn't until I got older that I started to discover more about what he's done, what he stood for, and the people he's helped. While Poppy had a career in boxing, Biagio is creating his own path in combat sports with mixed martial arts by competing in the Professional Fighters League. MMA fighters get a chance to fight for a million dollars and win a belt, um, and it's structured by points. So uh, it's basically like a kind of like an old school throwback uh, fighting tournament. PFL first came into the spotlight in 2018, backed by major sports investors. Today, it's broadcast in 160 countries with two international leagues. After launching in Europe in 2023, PFL has ventured into the Middle East and North Africa, an audience Biagio is hoping to captivate. Uh, I think that the way that the tournament is structured, and not even just the tournament, but the showcase spouts as well, you know, I, I think that it forces the, the fighters to fight and, and actually like go out there and put on a show. So. 
any PFL event, expect some exciting fights. The 25-year-old knows he'll be standing in the shadow of his grandfather, but Biagio believes he's a hidden gem in MMA, looking to shine when the time is right. Being related to him carries weight, but um, you know I welcome it all. You know, I, pressure I believe makes diamonds. I hope that one day I become a diamond because of all the pressure. Another fighter in the PFL's Middle East and North Africa cards is making history just by competing. Hatan Al Saif is the first ever Saudi woman to sign a deal with an international MMA league, an achievement she doesn't take lightly. It means a lot. It's a, a very heavy something to carry on because I'm going to represent every female in my country and every person in my country also at the same time. In her debut fight for the PFL, the 22-year-old dazzled the home crowd in Riyadh, knocking out her opponent, Egypt's Nada Fahim, with a head kick in the second round. For girls who watched the fight, her victory feels like a win for them too, as more are feeling empowered to overcome societal barriers to try their hand at combat sports. There's a lot of girls coming to our gym. They were telling me that they were so proud to see a girl like them that is fighting and they really would love to, to support me and to be like me. With fighters like Biagio and Hatan on the PFL's roster, it's only a matter of time before more fans in the Middle East get to see them live in action. From one championship's blockbuster fight night debut in Qatar to the PFL's ambitious move to the Middle East, it's a win-win for all MMA leagues grappling for a slice of the market. Now, we hope you enjoyed this episode, but that's all the time we have for now. For more, check out Euronews.com and connect with us through a hashtag. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Cutter 365.